Some four months ago, Zimbabwean-based Pastor Ian Indlovo was heavily criticized by some for a vision he had had which his head, the Lord, had revealed to him activities at a graveside after the death and burial of former Nigerian televangelist, Prophet T.B. Joshua. In the vision, I've seen people from various walks of life, people from many nationalities, people from different races at a grave, at a graveyard. But I saw something which is disturbing. I saw these people reading the Bible, some praying, some meditating, some holding leaflets, reading as if they were reading leaflets, and some were having the sort of spiritual experiences that we expect when people are having a church service. One of such activities he mentioned was necromancy, where people commune with the spirit of the dead at the grave. When I saw this disturbing vision twice, I asked the Spirit of God the import or the meaning of this kind of vision. God said the vision pertains to uh, the final resting place of the minister of the gospel who passed on. The Spirit of God says, uh, according to the mind of God, this departed minister of the gospel must not be uh, buried at or anywhere near where the church is located. Because according to the Spirit of God, when the grave, where the mortal remains of this departed minister of the gospel would be preserved, if the grave is at, at the church or anywhere near the church, within the same city as the church, Many people will come from various walks of life, from various nationalities, and from various races, and the enemy will trap them into doing necromancy. Some will be attempting to commune with the departed servant of the Almighty God. And in so doing, they will defile themselves and risk their salvation by practicing necromancy. A number of visitors trekked to the grave of the late prophet were seen in positions communing with the spirit of the dead. comments of Prophet Ian Lovu created a social media controversy between him and UK-based Prophet Ubed Angel who provided a completely different perspective on people going to the grave of the dead. And people all over the world, you know, you've got media going there, Christian pastors saying, this is evil, how can people vomit and be delivered at the grave? Yeah. I'm by no means going to comment on that yeah. per se, but I'm saying read your Bible a little bit before you talk because when you read the bible and you see that the bones yes oh yes come on sir yes sir the bones yeah of a prophet elisha yes when they were buried in there the body was buried until it became bones you know the the israelites they would take the the flesh and then uh the the cops and then uh the flesh falls off and then they bury the bones yes sir and they spied um, a band of Moabites coming to attack the land and they threw in the boat. The people were just having a, uh, it was a funeral. It was a funeral, yeah. Funeral procession. And then they threw the body in there and it touched the bones of a dead prophet and it rose. And the Bible says it's okay. Mm. Now, when you are a Christian and just opposing things because you, you want to oppose T.B. Joshua, yes. that's what you want to do. Yes, sir. And you run to it without even reading the Bible. I can show you verses from here to the island of Tubaktu. You wrap yourself yes. in and you come back again. We wrap you. <laughs> and you realize you have no leg to stand on. Pastor Ndlo still justified his position on the subject in another broadcast. There is a prophetic message that I gave. The message caused me to receive a lot of insults on the internet. I don't mind being insulted for what God has sent me to, to do. But what I know 
is that when God has sent someone, the, whatever is spoken will always come to pass because God is not a respecter of persons. Some of the people were insulting me on the internet. They were saying, I don't have spirituality which can be compared to so and so. In any case, the Bible does not allow Christians to compare themselves to each other. This man of God has been preserved. Where we were warning that he shouldn't be preserved. And what we are beginning to witness is acts of necromance. People are kneeling in front of his grave, talking to his grave, praying, as if his grave is a church altar of some sort. Now, why am I speaking like that? How is it a prophecy? I saw people preparing to go to that place from all over the world to do acts of worship at the grave there. And those who don't believe the messages that we speak, you will see very soon there will be testimonies that they will post of spiritual experiences which will be taking place at that grave. And this thing, according to the Spirit of God, it will be a snare to many people, including church leaders. It is a sin to kneel in front of a grave and do an act of worship. I will repeat, it is a sin to kneel in front of a grave, even to pray and meditate in front of a grave. It is a sin. People be connecting to all sorts of evil spirits in there. Am I saying this church has got evil spirits? No, I'm not saying the church has got evil spirits. But what I'm simply saying by the Spirit of God is that a doorway has been opened for evil spirits to start to be active. That's the prophetic warning that the Spirit of the living God gave me. If ever you feel the need to go and see the grave, just go and see the grave. Don't do anything to the grave. Go and see it like you see other graves. For some, it should be a tourist attraction to earn the ministry some revenue. You can turn the place to a tourist place. The power of God is still there. You can allow people less, just like them. Um, you see, we have Paul and Silas when they prayed and the prison condition, I mean, the prison was broken. You see, they still left the place like that. People still go there just to look at it as a tourist view. And one or two of them, you can sometimes say a prayer there and the Lord can equally release them.